morning and um, or good afternoon, depends when you're watching this. Um, so today we're looking at ultraviolet x-rays and gamma rays. And so we've got some images here um, and it says, what are they and how are they produced? So these we've got here, that's a foxglove. Can you see there? We've got obviously the human head with the jaw with the teeth. Um, this I think is honeysuckle. And here's a turtle. And how they've been produced? Well, I expect you all know that they are X. Um, so we've passed X rays through those materials or those objects, and some of the X rays have been absorbed by the object, and some have gone straight through. And they've made the film that um, they've reached when they've gone straight through go dark. And so we get these white bits where the X rays didn't reach um, because they were absorbed by the object and the darker areas where the x-rays got through. So we can see inside all of these different items. So what we're looking at today is to be able to define UV x-rays and gamma rays as the final part of the electromagnetic spectrum, describe how they're produced, x-rays and gamma rays specifically, how radiation dose in sieverts is a measure of the risk of harm and the dangers associated with the three types. So we are getting dangerous here. UV we're at very small wavelengths, okay? We're down at only the smallest UV, 10 to the minus 10 uh, meters, so it's 10 nanometers. X-ray wavelengths are um, 0 0.01 times 10 to the minus 10 um, meters, and then gamma even smaller again. And the smaller wavelength means it's a higher frequency, which means they are transferring higher energy and therefore they are more ionizing. And we know that it's this ionization that makes them dangerous. Ionization, if you remember from your chemistry, is when um, an electron is either added to or removed from an atom. And what happens with these is they remove the, um, ele an electron from the atom when the um, radiation is exposed onto the atom and that happens in your cells, in your body, it can cause mutations and lead to cancers. So this is why we're now in a dangerous situation. So ultraviolet, what does it mean? Well, its wavelength is just outside the violet region. So it's just shorter than uh, the violet area of the EM spectrum. And so it's not visible to the human eye. And it was discovered by a guy called Johann Ritter in 1801. And he's was 24 at the time. Um, Herschel had discovered infrared radiation in 1800 and Ritter decided to see if there was anything just outside the other blue end of the spectrum or the violet end. And in doing so, he found ultraviolet. Um, uses, so let's see what we've got here. We've got tanning beds, okay. Um, we've got using um, UV lights on um, identifying our, our own uh, property by using a special pen that glows in um, UV light. And there's Brian's, that looks like a Blackberry, I think, very old one there. Um, identifying forgeries, banknotes are now designed with specific dyes in them that they will um, glow under UV light if they are um, the true, the real thing. Uh, forensics, fingerprinting, UV lights used in that. And also any of you that have got braces or um, who have um, had a filling, unfortunately, when they glue your braces, those little brackets onto your teeth, they put orange glasses on your eyes and they use an orange shield. And that is because they are protecting their own light eyes from the UV light. And the UV light is used to um, react the glue that they use so that it goes solid and your braces stick to your teeth. Now, dangers. Well, we've already said that these um, types of radiation in the EM spectrum are ionizing. So, uh, and UV light particularly damages our skin. Um, it can premature age the skin. It can lead to mutations in skin cancer. Um, so, what precautions do we take in the sun? Well, you all know you wear a hat. You protect your eyes because you can actually lead to cataracts as well. Um, you uh, put on sun cream and you wear a t-shirt um, and um, all to protect your skin from cancer. Now, a common mistake to make is to say that UV causes cancer. It doesn't, it only causes skin cancer. You have to be specific. And that is because the UV light will not penetrate any deeper than your skin. It'll only go into the surface layers. So if you were ever asked, 
what is the danger of ultraviolet light? It is that it could cause skin cancer. Okay, it doesn't always, but it could. So here we have two images of someone um, where you're actually viewing the damage. On the right hand side, you're viewing the damage that's been caused to their skin because of the UV light. So I think I may have preempted myself. Okay, so UV radiation is ionizing, it can remove the electrons from molecules in your cells. And when you're burnt by the sun, your skin cells are ionized and will either die, or they'll heal, or they'll mutate. And it's those mutations that are a problem. Is it the same for everyone? Well, no, because darker skin actually protects the deeper skin cells from the ionizing effect of UV. And that's because darker skin actually absorbs more UV than pale skin, um, but it absorbs it in those first outer cell layers, which are actually, um, a, there's a lot of dead cells on the outer surface of your skin. Um, so those deeper cells um, are less likely to be damaged. Some creams work by reflecting or absorbing the UV radiation so it doesn't reach your skin. So the higher the SPF, sun protection factor, the longer you're protected from skin damage. So there we've got it written, SPF 30 means you can spend 30 times longer in the sun without burning than without the cream. Okay. Ozone layer of the atmosphere filters out a lot of UV radiation and that's why we talk about protecting our ozone layer and they stopped production of CFCs in or using them in propellants in aerosol sprays and in refrigerators because they found that when people were throwing these things away the released CFCs were damaging our ozone layer so there is actually a hole in the ozone layer particularly over the southern hemisphere and that is why there are higher numbers of cases of skin cancer in that area. Now there's actually three types of UV radiation, UVA, UVB and UVC and you may have seen that label on your sun cream bottle but you could find out more about those yourself. So why are x-rays called x-rays? Well I think this is really really cool. Are you ready? Revelation coming up here. When do you use an x in maths questions? Answer? when you don't know what the answer is. And that's what the X stood for. It just stood for unknown. They didn't know what these rays were, but they knew it was something, so they called them X-rays. So not that cool, really. Sorry for building it up more than it should be, perhaps. So how are they made? Well, you fire high-speed electrons. So what we have here is um, a little electron emission. So you heat up um, a, a wire, a filament, and um, it will release electrons from that and you don't need to explain why or how and but then if you, you know if you have um, a potential difference so if you've got a positive plate and a negative plate there's a potential difference between them the electrons are negative they're going to try to go towards the positive plate well if you put your electron gun in that situation and make the positive place very positive so you put a big voltage across it um, you're going to speed up those electrons so we get them fast moving in an electron tube. And then what we do is we're really mean to the poor little electrons. We smash them into a metal target, okay, which, um, and, um, which is actually positively charged and has made them speed up, but that's beside the point. So we smash them into this metal target and then they slow down really quickly. And in that process, their kinetic energy is turned into an X-ray. Right. You don't need to understand how that happens. We'll do that at A level. But so what's happening is you've got these electrons hitting a metal and um, producing an X-ray. And that happens in the X-ray tube. And it's a very controlled situation. They can control the wavelength of the X-rays that they're producing. So just like, photo uh, like light, X-rays affect photographic film. Um, and that's how we can use them. Or we can use them now with the electronic CCD charge couple device in exactly the same way. So we have digital X-ray machines now, whereas we used to have um, film. It took six hours to go and get an X-ray done when I was your age um, at uh, at, um, in the hospitals because um, you used to have to wait for the film to be developed. But now we're very lucky, it's much quicker. So x-rays are absorbed by metal and bone and transmitted by the soft tissue and that leads to their main use in medicine to take pictures inside the body. Also used to scan luggage at security checks or lorries arriving in ports. And they can actually be used 
um, when they are very short wavelengths to treat cancer cells because we've said they're very highly ionizing and we can control the wavelength of the x-rays by um, speeding up those electrons even more or using a different metal for them to smash into. And we can create x-rays that can actually be used in radiotherapy um, for cancer cells as well, because they cells. Um, so x-rays then pass through the body and they'll reach the film or detector where the, where the x-rays reach we dark and where they can't reach we white. So you see the bones as light and the surrounding tissue is dark. And the detector, the, the digital detector, has a thin layer on top of it that con converts the x-rays to light so that you can create the electronic signals to be sent to a computer, just in the same way as your camera, your phone on your camera on your phone even works. Now, safety. Lead absorber plates are put between the x-ray tube and the patient to protect other parts of the body from the x-rays because x-rays are ionizing and high doses kill living cells low doses can cause um, cell mutation and cancerous growth. So they can be used for radiotherapy, but we also want to pre prevent um, any um, cancer developing. And so what you find is that there is a, a fixed dose of x-rays that you are allowed to have during a year in order to minimise the risk. X-ray therapy then used to destroy cancerous tumours in the body, and they use thick plates to protect healthy body tissues and x-rays used for therapy have a shorter wavelength than those used for imaging. Remember, as the wavelength gets shorter, the electromagnetic wave gets more dense. CT scans, these are a, a computerized tomography scanner. And what happens is the x-ray source moves around the patient. Um, it's like a big ring that goes over the patient's head and then it can move over their body as well. And as you can see, the x-ray beam is from one side and the detectors are on the other side. And as you move the source and the detectors, you can take an image at different angles. And what happens is that they can do like a slice through the body and then they move the, um, the patient or the scanner, depending on how the system is set up slightly, so that the patient moves slightly within the um, ring and then you take another slice and then you move again and another slice and another slice so they end up with this 3D image of an organ. Often used for brain scans to see of any um, bleeding or um, any damage from head injuries. So comparison, a CT scan will distinguish between bone and soft tissue as will an ordinary x-ray machine. But the CT scanner will also distinguish between different types of soft tissue, which is why it's good for these brain scans. You get a 3D image from the CT scanner, but the radiation dose is much higher than an ordinary X-ray machine and the cost of the equipment is much greater. So it's only used um, in emergency or special situations. Gamma radiation then. So you will have looked at this when you studied atomic structure in year nine. Can you remember where gamma radiation comes from? I'm waiting for your answers, but I doubt I'm going to hear them. Um, it comes from the nucleus, doesn't it? All nuclear radiation comes from the nucleus. So, um, and why is it dangerous? Same as x-rays, it's ionizing, high energy ionizing. And sievert, can you remember right from the start? Measure of radiation dose. So uses of gamma then, let's see what we've got. We've got um, here on the left, there's a circle around an organ. And what's happened is a tracer, a radioactive tracer has been put in the body and it's gone through the blood um, stream and it's been attached to a cer certain molecule that will go to certain cells. And this one looks like it's gone into the lungs, doesn't it? So it's probably been put on oxygen and breathed in and it's collected in a certain area. And that's where there's a lot of activity going on. And so it might indicate that there was a problem in that region or that that organ wasn't working very well. Um, in the middle at the top, we've got the gamma rays um, being targeted at a tumour. So that is showing you radiotherapy. And then in the bottom right hand side, we've got a pipe which has got a radioactive tracer in it. And we're measuring the radiation on the top surface. And you can see that where there's a leak, where there's a pool, there's a higher count rate because there is more of the radioactive tracer. 
Now, obviously, you'd want um, a different half-life for each of these um, situations. For the ones in the um, where you've actually put it into the body, or uh, for the tracer and for the tracer in the pipes, you're probably going to want quite a short half-life, long enough to be able to do the tests, but short enough to disappear fairly quickly. So how do ionizing waves affect humans? They ionize the atoms and they can have a severe, severe effect on living tissue by killing cells or damaging DNA. So ultraviolet rays absorbed by the skin, okay? X-rays pass through the body, um, skin, and um, uh, they get absorbed by denser materials, so like bone, um, and then gamma rays can pass right through everything, um, but they are the most high energy and can ionize atoms in living tissue. So, um, I'm not sure whether this is going to work. I might leave that for you. You've got access to this PowerPoint as well. You can have a go at doing that yourselves. All right.